Okay, so everybody's favorite, how to make a good cone pack. I'm going to start with a coil that's relatively thick. Uh, what I want to do here is make sure that my coil is thick enough to uh, submerge the, the cone up to the bottom of this uh, number here, the cone number. Uh, if, if you buy those pre-made uh, cone pack holders that Orton sells, you'll see that the cone will sink up to about, I don't know, that half an inch or so, right to the bottom of this, this number right here, which is what they recommend that the cones be uh, mounted in. So I want my coil about that thick. Um, the other thing that Orton tells us is uh, the angle that is manufactured into the bottom of these cones that is actually the correct angle for these cones to uh, to work at. So you know, if, if your cone, if you mount your cone in a clay pack that's uh, too far forward, it's going to fall sooner than it ought to. And if you mount it so it's standing too straight up, it's also not going to work. It may not fall at all, or it might fall in some crazy direction. So, uh, and you can always tell which way they're going to fall too by holding this up and letting it fall. It's always going to fall on its face. I, I call this the, the little spine that's right here, and this is the face. So like after a long day of firing, you're really tired and you want to fall on your face, um, just like the cones. So I've got my coil rolled out here, I've got my cone, and to make sure that we've got that correct angle that's that's been manufactured into the, um, the cone. Uh, we're just going to wrap, holding the cone flush against the, the table, uh, we're just going to wrap that coil around. If we're just doing one, you can just wrap your coil around all the way. You can see that it's mounted right up to the bottom of that line, that circle there. And if you wanted to go back in with a fettling knife and cut away some of this excess clay, like if you're making your cone pack at the very last minute, um, you can, of course, do that and poke it full of holes if you like to. Uh, you can also see that the very bottom of the cone is, there's no uh, clay stuck underneath there, so we know that that is at the exact right angle. Um, if you want to do a couple cone packs, like let's say you've got several that you're doing for a long firing, or you need to know when your reduction is going to start, if you're using guard cones, uh, start with your uh, hottest cone, which I've got here is cone 10, uh, give yourself a little extra coil, and then instead of just tearing those coils off, I kind of fold them in and weld them together with my finger a little bit, and then I'm going to go for my next cone, which in this case is cone 9. So now I've got two cone packs and you can go, you can make as many cone packs as you want. If you get bored while you're firing, you can just put cones in for fun, so you have something to do while you're waiting for cone 10 to drop. Uh, but you can see now I've got cone 9, which will melt first, cone 10, and they're both at the correct angle because I've got no clay underneath, it. they're sitting flush on the table, and I usually try to make sure I've got enough clay around the bottom of the cone uh, to be holding it. Sometimes you see cone packs made very hastily like so and uh, of course you'll find the cone after the firing looking kind of like that. Uh, just make sure that there's enough clay to hold the cone in place. If you need to make a cone for starting reduction, let's say we're doing like an 012 or something for a cone 10 firing, we would go ahead and make that single cone pack. And then if you want to make a little tray out of clay to catch that melted cone, just make a thick coil. and turn it into a little reservoir.
and that can just attach onto the coil that you've put on there. Now you've got something that'll catch this cone, which by the end of the firing, of course, will be extremely melted. Um, one thing about making cone packs this way, if you do uh, expect your cones to melt uh, a lot, if you're using a low cone to, to signify when you add reduction or salt, uh, you're definitely going to want to put a waster underneath because, of course, this cone is going to be in contact with a kiln shelf. So just put a little waster underneath there or maybe a little extra kiln wash and you will be good. Alright, thanks a lot.